In this video, we're going to do the ILS DME Runway 9 into London City. Two things make this approach unique. One, there's no procedure turn. There is, but it's a teardrop procedure turn. It's not like what we're used to seeing. And the second thing, the glide slope is five and a half degrees. A normal glide slope is three degrees. So this is going to be almost twice the vertical speed when we're on the glide slope. For course reversal, you'll notice there's category A and B and another line with 305 outbound for category C. If your approach speed is under 120 knots, you're going to use the category A and B line. If your approach speed is 121 up to 140 knots, you're going to use category C. If the airplane you're flying is faster than that, you cannot do the approach. You'll notice the category A and B line has a much smaller turn radius. Category C is a much wider turn radius. The faster you're going, the larger the turn radius. We'll be at 2,000 feet the whole time. Once we're established inbound, intercept the glide slope. Category A will come down to 401 feet. Category B, 431. And Category C, 461 feet. And if we get to these heights and we don't see the airport, we're going to go missed. You can see the missed approach procedure up here. Next, we'll set the approach up, but I also need to say this video is sponsored by Navigraph. They did give me a free subscription. Without that, we wouldn't be able to do this video and show you this cool approach. First thing I like to set up is the localizer. The localizer frequency is 111.15. Identification for that is India Lima Sierra Tanko ILST. You can clearly see that's ILSR, but that will switch to a T when we get to the other side of the airport. Localizers usually use the same frequency on the same piece of pavement. They just have different identifiers on either side. Next, we need to set in the NDB. The frequency is 322. This is what we're going to use to track from on the 288 or 305 course, depending on our category. Flight Sim 2020 does have this approach in the GPS. It does not draw the approach correctly. It does not fly it correctly. From the 5 DME fix, it makes a left turn and goes to the 5 DME fix on the final approach course in a straight line when it should be an arc. I've also pulled up the wind bearing and I've also pulled up the DME on NAV1. Since we're going to track outbound with an NDB, we need to pull that up as well. I'm using the bearing pointer and I'm going to keep pressing bearing until I see ADF and the frequency. You'll also get a blue bearing needle. We'll be crossing the fix and flying outbound at 2000 so we can set 2000 in the altitude selector. Notice after I set the altimeter the elevation is about 20 feet. Watch it when we land. And I do not change it. These numbers are a typical three degree glide slope that you would see on a normal ILS approach. The whole point of this ILS approach video is to show the steep approach at London City. A normal three degree glide slope at a hundred knot ground speed, your rate of descent will be approximately 531 feet. At London City, at a hundred knot ground speed, 975 feet per minute. And at a hundred and sixty knot ground speed, a normal glide slope, 849 feet per minute. And at London City, almost 1,600 feet per minute. And you may notice they give a speed of 160 knots, but they also say category D is not applicable. 160 knots is inside category D. However, the approach speed you fly for categories is indicated airspeed, and you could have a 20 knot tailwind, increasing your ground speed up to 160 knots. As we fly outbound from the London City NDB, we need to be on the 288 bearing from that station. We're currently on the 295 bearing, we need to come to the left more, so that's why we're correcting to the west. There's a note on this procedure on a different page that's not shown, but basically it says that ATC normally issues a speed restriction of 160 knots until 5 DME. We can now turn back to the right as we are on the 288 bearing from the station. In this case, instead of turning to a heading of 288, when the tail of the needle is on 288, we're going to turn until the magenta diamond is on 288. That magenta diamond is called the current track indicator. 
That's our heading, plus or minus any wind deviation. That's our track over the ground with wind correction. And as we go outbound, on previous approaches we've used time to time our outbound leg. This one is off a of DME, and the DME is off of the localizer, and you can see that up here by the identifier. And if you're not quite sure how to track to or from an NDB, I do have a video on that. I'll include a link up above at the end. We're currently at 4.3 DME. When we hit 5 DME, we're going to stay in heading mode and we're going to make a turn to the left to intercept the localizer. There's 5 DME. We can start our left turn to intercept the localizer. accidentally move the cursor off of heading just a little bit. When I turn my heading bug, I do it with my mouse wheel, and that messed me up just a little bit and got us behind, and we do shoot through final because of it. And as the course is coming in, we can press nav. And remember, when you press a button over here, you should see a corresponding message up here. Remember, if you're doing a precision approach, you're going to press nav, and then if you're cleared for the approach, you're going to press approach. And what approach does is it arms a glide slope, and the flight director will follow the glide slope. If you're doing a non-precision approach, like a VOR or an NDB, you're going to press nav. You will not use approach mode. Glide slope intercept is at 3.4 DME. We want to be fully configured, gear down, full flaps, and on approach speed at or prior to this point. The glide slope's alive at two dots high, we can go gear down. At one dot high, we can go full flaps. We're now fully configured. Glide slope is captured. I'm aiming for approximately 80 knots indicated airspeed. The only thing we have left to do is get to decision height, decide whether or not to land or go missed, depending on if we see the airport or not. Decision height is 401 feet. Our ground speed is 100 knots. You can see on the chart, 100 knot ground speed. Rate of descent should be about 975 feet per minute, and we're doing pretty close to that. This is actually modeled correctly in Flight Sim 2020. You can see the runway out the window. This is a very steep approach. This is one more reason why we need to be on speed prior to the glide slope intercept. At this steep of a descent angle, in some airplanes, it may be difficult or impossible to get slowed down to approach speed. That's something very undesirable when landed on a short runway. One other thing I want to mention, when you're doing an ILS, the glide slope is green. If you're doing an RNAV GPS approach and you've intercepted the glide path, the glide path indicator will be magenta. As we approach minimums right there, runway's in sight, we will land. And as we get inside the airport boundary, I do dip below the glide path. Lighted visual approach systems like what we see on the left side of the runway and a glide slope on an ILS, those are set up to have you touch down a thousand feet down on the aim point or thousand foot markers. It's normally not a good idea to dip below glide path but in this case, it's a short runway with a slight tailwind, and we were inside the airport boundary, and there were no obstacles, and it's Flight Simulator 2020. And you'll notice I did not change the altimeter setting, and we're indicating negative 110 feet. The only thing I can come up with is I had live weather on, 
and the pressure changed while I was doing the approach, but that would be a pretty big pressure change in a very short time period. Thank you for watching.